Welcome to another video. Okay, today we're looking at this cassette deck, and how would you pronounce that name? It's Lau something. Maybe I'll this. Learn from this video. You did not just do that. That is a blow punt. You owe me a blow punt. Blow punt. Blow punt. Yeah, that's right. That means. Um, blue dot. Yes, in German that means blue dot, which according to Wikipedia was what they would put on their headphones after they were quality control inspected. I had never heard of before seeing this cassette deck on eBay that Blaupunkt actually made home equipment. I was familiar with them as a car stereo manufacturer and in the 80s and 90s they made all sorts of sort of high-end car stereos. Look at this one. This one's weird. My aunt actually had a Mercedes with this in it. It was kind of an unusual thing, but and it may seem weird to you today uh, that all the car stereos are sort of built into the car, but back in the 80s, car stereo theft was a major concern, and so people had all different ways of combating this, including a pull-out stereo. Blaupunk being a favorite target of car thieves led to this kind of ridiculous scene in the movie MacGruber. May I take your coat? Nope. Your car stereo? That's true. And unfortunately, like many other audio brands, eventually through mergers, bankruptcies, whatever, no, the name Blaupunk today is just a reseller of Chinese components. I doubt anybody will be stealing these today. And who knew, but also in the 80s, they made a bunch of home products, including VCRs, TVs, stereos, tape decks, all that kind of stuff. One of their products for the home was this set of components called Micronics. You can see the tape deck there on the lower right in this catalog. What the Micronics were, were a set of smaller than usual home components and they could go together in different Die. That die is German for thee. So that says the, the Micronics are coming, I guess. I don't know. I don't speak German. Our ancestors are from German. Germany, Germany, yeah. So it's like a little mini component system that could also be put in two different rack configurations that were available. What, what are they wearing? Yeah, that's the 80s. It was the 80s. Well, that explains everything. You had two optional racks, and so you, since these were smaller than usual components, and you couldn't... Dad, do you want one of those? No, they look ridiculous. Since these were smaller than usual racks, you see the turntable, you couldn't really shrink a turntable. Unless you had a shrinking device, like yeah, in, a, in I, a movie. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's... And that, it also came with this case, which made it sort of look like a boom box. Although, if you look at this boom box, I don't see how this could work. If you carried around speakers and a tuner and a tape deck in this case... It would not be usable as a as a boombox. You see, you got the two handles. You got the I dropped it at heat her. Grill. Her. Another thing, it doesn't say anything about power. You know, and this tape deck actually has a power regular power cord. It doesn't have a DC end, so I'm assuming this case is just. How a did case. you get her moving? There were two different photos. Uh, you know, I think she's like flexing her leg to get ready to lift this boombox. Okay, so now we get to the repair part, which. You know, this thing was kind of cool looking at it first, but the uh, relationship soured when the difficulty of a simple repair revealed itself. It the was belt was melted. And so looking inside this, you can see the belt had just turned to goo. So, you And know, then Dad caused another problem. Oh, yeah. Like, I guess Blaupunkt knows how to really cram things in there on car stereos, so this thing is really tightly packed. I got the front cover off, and I got to the bottom, and you just sort of cleaned off all the belts. Uh, I've got to get behind this plate to get a new belt around there, but there's like a circuit board and all this stuff on the side even after I remove the power supply. Like, where do I go next from here? Uh, and, then, <laughs> and then Dad, once he unscrewed it, got confused which, which screw goes which. Yeah, I ended up messing up these little micro switches, putting it back in, uh, reversing them. But it's also got that control cable. Here's what happened when I tried to put it back together. I'm not sure what that means. That gets the motor going. So that switch has got to be active for the motor to go. And this one. I ended up getting really confused over this micro switch. In addition to accidentally swapping them, I ended up figuring that out. I couldn't figure out why it wouldn't keep playing unless I activated the micro switch first. Then I remembered the counter. There's a little counter belt with the sensor and if the counter doesn't turn, it stops. So once I fixed that problem and put the right micro switch switches in right everything started working just fine it did also have a like a control cable like that Marantz which was annoying because I actually knocked that out that's what caused that buzzing noise so how does it work as a tape deck first of all the form factor is a lot smaller I mean it's like a little tiny tape deck I shall call him mini me it's a lot shorter than a standard tape deck it's maybe a little bit less deep it looks cool. I mean, it has the open face style that the higher end Pioneer tape decks from the Blue Line have, where you just put the cassette in. 
it would look great on a bookshelf, you know, surrounded by uh, books. books. And yeah. a cross. Yeah, yeah. That's all the German-related books I could find to put near the German tape deck. But anyway, we'll leave you with a sound sample. Just play some sounds through it. This is just some uh, YouTube audio samples. Sing, see you next time for another video. Thank you.